Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, recently, I showed a uh, recipe Docker container or a Docker container that allows you to store recipes and that sort of thing so that you can access them uh, basically from wherever as long as you've got uh, remote access set up via a reverse proxy or whatever. And that was called Mealy. Um, and I used Mealy for a while, had it set up, and I noticed I was having a lot of issues with retaining data uh, no matter what kind of setup I use for databases and things like that. Uh, luckily, J. Collins 25 over in my Discord server. Uh, I do have a Discord server that's open to the public. If you want to check that out, link in the description. Uh, but Jay Collins uh, uh, actually pointed me in the direction of uh, Tandor Recipes, uh, which is another, obviously, recipe Docker container uh, setup uh, that actually works really well. And I wanted to take just a few minutes to show you uh, this other container. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look. So here we are uh, on my desktop taking a look at Tandor our Recipes here. Um, this is their their website. Uh, if you, they, they don't actually have a website other than their documentation website, from what I can tell at this point. But uh, this is uh, kind of all the information you would need. Uh, lots of great information in here. Um, installation for lots of different uh, ways to handle this. Uh, there's some features in here. Uh, system. Lots of good information. Definitely recommend checking out uh, this uh, this documentation website. Uh, also, if we jump over to their hub.docker.com, uh, we can see that this was updated uh, within the last 12 hours. Uh, so that tells me that there's active development going on uh, with this system. So very excited about that. Uh, but jumping back over here, uh, when I was first looking at this, uh, I scrolled through and I got about this far and uh, saw that this was all CLI or command line. And of course, we don't like to do things uh, with command line very often if we don't have to on this channel. So uh, I went ahead and uh, wrote up a, a uh, Docker Compose stack uh, here. And then, and then, of course, uh, as I was scrolling further down on this page, uh, I ran into this. Um, this has got a lot of good information in there, a lot of good stuff, but um, I am, I'm, mine's just easier, um, less setup involved, that sort of thing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, copy this. We're just going to do a, like that, go to copy. We jump over here to, uh, to Portainer, um, and then we'll click on Stacks, and we'll add a new stack. And we're just going to paste this in here. And I, I'm going to come up here. Uh, I'm going to call this Tandor, like so. And then <clears throat> if we just if you run through this real quick, obviously version 2 services will be recipes. The images or the image for this will be uh, username slash recipes. Container name, recipes. Uh, port, uh, originally this ran on 8080. Um, there's a good chance though, uh, if you've been following my channel or even uh, any of the other channels that are out there that talks about this kind of stuff, you've probably already got something on 8080. So I just picked a random port, switched it to 82. So here we can see that there are also, we'll need a map to uh, two volumes here, uh, one for static files, one for media files. Uh, I was actually testing this on a different system when I wrote up these volume paths. So what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm just gonna switch this to SRV. Uh, for both of those, uh, like so. So I'll be in SRB configs, recipes, and then static files and media files for my setup. Of course, you'll want to map those appropriately for your setup, so keep that in mind. Uh, below that, we've got some environmental variables. We've got a secret key. Uh, I couldn't find what this is actually for. I'm guessing for some sort of encryption for uh, the user. You have a user account with this, uh, so probably maybe encrypting the, the, the password, something like that. I'm not entirely sure. If you know, uh, I would love for you to put that in the comment section down below. Uh, if we can get that figured out, I'll pin that comment to the top. Um, so below that, we've got uh, a database engine. Uh, we're going to use, uh, well, we're, uh, a Postgres database. Uh, so our, our host will be DB Recipes. Our port, uh, this is standard 5432. Username, password, and database. Uh, you should probably change those up here uh, for security purposes, if nothing else. And of course, whatever you change up here, uh, make sure you change down here as well. Um, and then uh, we've got restart, let's stop. I should probably add that uh, down here on the database as well, like so. Um, so that's basically all we need to do for this, uh, for this Docker Compose, for this stack, uh, whatever you want to call it there, that's basically it. So all we've got to do at this point is scroll down and click on deploy the stack. So we'll give this a minute to download the files it needs to download and go ahead and do its thing here. Uh, if we come over here to, uh, to our recipes uh, container, we click here, uh, this, this is wrong. So what we actually, uh, want to do 
Uh, in fact, I could probably fix this uh, another way now that I think about it. I'm just going to restart that container. It's having a hard time communicating with the database. Uh, so if I open this back up, uh, now, now it's working. Now it's doing what it needs to do. Uh, for this. So really, I think if I were to put in a, a depends on a DB in that stack, it might actually uh, wait to connect until the database is ready. Um, so that's something that I'll try to get in there uh, in the stack before it goes live. Shouldn't be an issue for you. But if it is, if you have a hard time connecting, uh, just restart the, uh, the application container, not the database container, uh, because they started at the same time and the, 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 the database needs to come up first. So uh, it looks like maybe we've got everything up and running here now. So what I'm going to do is come over here. I'm just going to click on this. Uh, there we go. Uh, this works. So uh, basically what we're going to do now is create uh, a username and a password. Now, uh, from my experience, there's only one user available on this system. There's not a multi-user management system in place. That may come up later um, as development goes along, but for right now, it is just a single user system uh, from what I've been able to ascertain. So we're going to click on uh, Create Super User Account, and uh, now we're just going to log in with that account. Like so, and nope. So here we are, and... <clears throat> This is where I think the developer could use a little uh, direction, in my opinion. Uh, I, I built websites for a long time, uh, and user experience was a big thing for me and the way I built things. So in order to add a recipe, uh, you've actually got to click on this little uh, hamburger menu right over here, and then you can click on New Recipe. Uh, and then you can go through the process of, of, of manually putting in whatever your recipe is going to be. So with that being said, though, uh, the way I like to do things, um, and more specifically my wife, I'm not a cook. I make chili. I make a few things here and there. My wife's the cook in the house. Um, so what I, I've actually talked to her about this already. Chances are you're just going to want to import recipes and then modify them later. So uh, we're going to do a website import. And then uh, again, everything's up in that little, that little toggle up there. And I really feel like these should be just up here in the up above the search bar or something, um, or at least at least these two, there should, those two need to be moved out of that little drop down. They're hidden, and in my opinion, that's a bad user experience. I had to search for that to find those. So, uh, so we're gonna do a website import. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, um, 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 let's say, let's do chicken recipes. And, and then we're just gonna find uh, a, a basic recipe here. This is under Cafe Delights. This is honey garlic chicken. That actually sounds really good. So what I'm gonna do is just paste that in there click go. And there we go. Uh, so it's it's got our original thing there. It's got a recipe name. Uh, preparation time is there, waiting time, servings. I don't know that that's actually one serving. Um, but here we've got all of our recipes uh, with all of our ingredients. Uh, we've got instructions over here with notes. So if we just scroll down a little bit, we've got instructions down here a little further. Keywords, you can add keywords to this if you want uh, for searching later. Um, but let's just go ahead uh, and say import, we'll just do that. We'll click import, like so. And now we've got this recipe up here uh, just that quickly and easily. Uh, if you wanted to, I believe you can come up here, click edit uh, and modify any of this stuff that you need to modify for any reason. Of course, then you can click save or save and view, add a step, add nutrition, whatever you wanna do there. Um, of course, there are little notes over here uh, that I think are, are great. Uh, they, they've done a really good job as far as that's concerned. All your information's down here, and they've even managed to leave in uh, where the original recipe came from. So I really dig that. Um, there, there's other stuff up here that honestly I haven't gotten too far into. Um, really, I just wanted to show how to import recipes um, because it's not very intuitive uh, as far as that's concerned based on the way the user interface is at this point. Um, <clears throat> so if we come over here, we can, we can create our own cookbooks. Uh, somehow we could call this uh, dinners maybe. Um, we'll just click save. <clears throat> and then toggle recipes, there's nothing in here yet. But maybe if we come over here to this, click on edit, um, and maybe um, I don't really see anything in here uh, as far as how to add it to that book. So uh, this is Editing David, you can tell by the headphones. Uh, while I was editing this video, I actually figured out how to add uh, recipes to a book, and I wanna show you that just real quick. Uh, so here we are, uh, if we come back over here uh, to my desktop, uh, we're taking a look, we've got this easy honey garlic uh, chicken recipe. If we click here, uh, there's nothing there, 
But if we come into here and then click up here, uh, then we can click add to book. We can select our book and click add. So that's been added there. So if we come over to cookbooks, uh, we can toggle recipes and right there uh, is our recipe. So that's how to add uh, a recipe to a book. Uh, just, it, it took me actually going through the footage to figure out uh, where that was. Um, so there's still some ambiguity as far as the functionality of this, but if you're just looking for a way to store recipes, uh, whether they're recipes you want to try, recipes that you like, uh, things like that, this is a great way to store these recipes or whatever recipes you want to store rather. Uh, also, because there is a user account uh, built into this, uh, I feel better about saying, go ahead and make this publicly available uh, through a reverse proxy, whether it's Nginx Proxy Manager or Traffic, whatever the case is there, whichever you prefer. Uh, I would say because this has a user account built into it, at least there's a little bit more security involved in, uh, in that. So uh, definitely check this out if you're interested uh, in, in storing recipes on your Docker server. Um, and if you found the video helpful, it would really mean a lot to me. Uh, if you gave the video a thumbs up, it really does help me out quite a bit. Again, as per usual, uh, all of the resources that you're going to need will be available in the description down below. Also, while you're down there, there are a couple of different ways you can help support the channel, whether it's through coffee as a one-time tip, or if you want to become a patron, uh, that would be amazing as well. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons, my channel members. You guys are amazing. Thanks so much for your support. Also, as I mentioned earlier, I do have a Discord. I have had it for a while, uh, and recently we've been getting uh, more and more members every day. Uh, so if you want to check that out, uh, there is a HD public uh, forum available for uh, just anybody who wants to join the Discord. Of course, there is also a, a, a patrons only Discord section uh, that if you if you uh, are the right level of patron, uh, you'll get access to that as well. So uh, I will have links to the Discord down below as well if you want to check that out. But I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.